Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, a new presentation about the laboratory surveyor closed session or list of documents required by Sibahi surveyor related to uh, lab. It's divided into three parts, one part for the general lab, another one for the blood bank and the third one is for the histopathology. Today we are going to discuss the documents required for the general lab and inshallah in the next presentation we can discuss the issues related to blood bank and histopathology. So let's go. What's required here is for laboratory organizational structure or organization structure. Number one, laboratory scope of service. You should have a scope of service for your lab. You're talking about the services provided inside the lab, machines inside the lab, uh, internal customers, external customers, statistics for the lab, uh, referral references for the lab results, and so on. So number one, you have to prepare a scope of service. Number two, organizational structure. Uh, of course, it's related or under the cover of the medical director, then the head of lab, then if there is a vice for lab uh, director, then the departments inside the lab, chemistry, hormone, and so on. Number three is departmental meeting minutes. We don't need here the meeting minutes lab shared in. For example, like medical executive and so on, we need internal meeting minutes in, inside lab. Of course, inside lab people will uh, sit with each other and they will discuss something related to uh, uh, the department itself, of course, uh, something is uh, like approving uh, the policies for lab, discussing uh, the internal disaster plan, scope of service, the uh, projects for improvement, what the difficulties, the schedules for the uh, uh, duty, and so on. So we need some departmental meeting minutes, and of course, if you can do a TOR for it, which is a term of reference for uh, those meeting and show us the meeting minutes with implementation and those implementation are uh, uh, sorry with the some uh, uh, recommendation and those recommendation are implemented number four is internal disaster plan it could be a part of the uh, internal disaster plan of the hostel but you have to discuss here uh, 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 in brief what's going on if there is the disaster plan uh, including the lab like a fire or a collapse uh, in the lab or the hostel itself. So it could be a, a separate one, a small one from the uh, general internal disaster plan for the hostel. It should be prepared by the people related to FMS security and safety plus the lab internal uh, safety coordinator. Then we will go to laboratory customer focus. Number five is departmental scope of service discussed before six interdepartmental agreement. Some agreement between departments, between lab and the other department, and between lab divisions or sections inside the department. Agreement about the referral number, agreement about the time uh, requested to uh, give the people the uh, results of uh, lab investigations, and so on. Number seven, POCT testing program and the point of care is a very simple issue. Any machines uh, used in investigation, doing investigation outside lab. For example, if we have a glucometer uh, with the nurses or in ER or a blood gas machine, those are point of care. You have to tell me that you have to train some people inside those departments how to use uh, the machine, how to calibrate, and you have to follow with them the results of uh, those the, uh, of those machines. The aim here is to make sure that the results of those machines outside lab are working well. Number eight is assign a POCT point of care uh, testing coordinator inside those departments. So, so someone should be in ICU, someone should be in ER, someone should be in the nurses if they have a glucometer or ABG arterial blood gas uh, testing and so on. Number nine is blood supply exchange agreement. So agreement for exchange and blood supply with the blood bank, with the medical director, with OR. So you have to show me agreement. If you do not have 
blood inside or blood donation inside the hospital, you have to show me agreement with other hospital to supply you with the blood required by your lab. Number 10 is laboratory policy for uh, TAD, turnaround time. Show me the policy for turnaround time, turnaround time for all investigation done inside uh, uh, the lab. Number 11 is evidence of establishing TAD in agreement with all relevant technical department. As soon as you developed your TAT, when you finish those uh, uh, investigation, what's the required time for each specific test uh, to be finished, to be completed, TAT or state, you have to supply it with people and they have to sign with you, the medical director and the head of the department, that they will accepting the time frame you are supplying them with the results of those investigation. The third thing is the laboratory facility and safety program, laboratory safety and infection control manual. You have to have a manual related to safety and infection control inside lab. Tell me what to do in relation to infection control, how to uh, uh, manipulate the waste management, wash the hand, wearing the PPE, and so on. And related to safety also, uh, spell cake fire, uh, fire extinguishers, how to uh, uh, fight a fire, and so on. Number 13 is laboratory safety and infection control training program. If you have a manual, did you train your people on the stuff inside lab on so show me the training program and attendance sheet for the people who trained and if you are doing some monitoring for their uh, 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 training it it would be better number 14 is laboratory policy and procedure on monitoring the safety and infection control if you have some items inside your uh, safety and infection control manual with training show me what you are monitoring are people wearing the PPE? Are they dealing with the, dealing with the spell kit in a proper way? Are they putting the uh, uh, face mask, uh, gloves, goggles, and so on? And in related to safety also, do they know where is the uh, safety shower, the eye wash station, the nearest exit, and the assembly point, and so on? Number four is laboratory parts personal. We are talking about persons inside lab right now. So number 15 is departmental request for resources and the staff, and this is one of the most important uh, uh, items related to the uh, job description of the head of department. He's shared in requiring or requesting resources and staffing from his uh, superiors. So show me some uh, uh, email, some letters that you are requesting from your, your supervisors, some resources and staffing. Staffing means people like physician, like technicians, or you're requesting resources like machines, like uh, supplement, like medical supply, and so on. Number 16 is departmental staffing plan. Tell me what is going on in relation to the staff, how many staff you required as a physician, as a technician, specialists, what's the job description for them, what they have to do, what would be the vacation for them, and so on. So total staff required divided on uh, all the sections and uh, uh, departments inside lab, their uh, work, their uh, customers, and so on inside your staffing plan for lab. Number 17, laboratory facility policy on job description and sample job description. We need the hospital job description policy and show me some samples of job description of lab staff like a physician, consultant, or a specialist technicians, specialists for technicians, and uh, so on. Number 18 is policy for delegation of authority of someone like a head of department or uh, the director of lab are going for vacation or uh, something, who will take care for the job and how could do it with the policy for delegation of authority, could be the hostel or could be some specialized policy for lab. Number 19, laboratory training and the competency assessment program. You have, a, you have to have a program for training the, the peoples, uh, whatever they are physicians or technicians, and you have to show the competency assessment for them. Competency assessment means we are testing them how to do the things with a, a, a well, uh, prepared program uh, required or uh, repeated how many times per year and the result of the competency and action plan on the competency assessment program. The fifth department or division is laboratory purchasing and inventory. 
laboratory policy and the procedure on receiving inspection and testing of material and services. You have to show me the, the policy for how to inspect the machine, the, the services, the materials, how to purchase uh, them. Number 21 is policy and procedure for tracking and inventory management of supply and the agents. You have to tell me how could you re uh, track searching for some machine or a supply or even a reagent coming to your lab tell me where when you used where in, in 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 which department or division inside the lab you uh, used still there is some of them or finished already how could you uh, 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 get rid of it and so on number 22 is laboratory policy and procedure on reagent and solution labeling show me the policy and this policy should be implemented evidence of labeling every single solution and machine or reagent inside the lab number 23 is laboratory policy and procedure on supplies and reagent storage how to store where to store what's the amount to store what to do with those store what you will do if there is a leak or or a spell of them number 24 laboratory policy and procedure on water type you have to tell me what types of water you are using inside lab how many how many types and did you uh, checking or testing those water or not? Are you sending them to be tested or not? Those water are good to be used. It's safe for the tests, it's safe for the machines, or it will affect the result of uh, the investigation, or it will affect the safety or uh, 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 the ability to, to machine to give a good results. Number 25 is laboratory policy and procedure on reference laboratory services. What would be the reference laboratory services, the numbers and the, uh, the references and your policy. Number 26 is list of essential medical supplies and devices. You have to have a list, take it from the people uh, in the medical engineering. They have to supply you with a list of the medical supply, med the devices you are using in uh, the lab and from medical supply what are the list of medical supplies inside the lab devices like the machines and the medical supplies like the reagent like the solutions like uh, 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 the gloves like the goggles like everything 27 is laboratory facility policy and procedure for description on critical equipment selection how to use the critical equipment you have to have a policy then after that uh, the 28, 29, it's related to, as we said before, it's related to uh, blood bank, and we will discuss it later on. Number 30 is laboratory policy and procedure in standardizing of laboratory instrument. How to standardize your instruments. When you're starting the job every day or every shift, how you standardize the machines. If you have more than one machine, how to make doing the same uh, investigation, how to make sure that they are working well and giving uh, the right results. Number 32, lab audit trial system. You have to have a system or a process for audit trail. Number 32, laboratory policy process and procedure on test method validation. How to validate the test method. Number 34 is laboratory policy and procedure and method of instrument correlation. This correlation means if you have, uh, as we said before, more than one uh, machine or one uh, apparatus doing the same uh, test you have to do correlation between them <clears throat> 35 laboratory policy and procedure on controlling the quality of the test method number 38 laboratory service and specimen collection manual you have to have a manual talking about the specimen since they uh, 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 prepare it inside or or any uh, department then those specimen came to lab what you have to do from receiving the specimen until giving the result to the concerned department. You have to have a manual describing this process. Number 37 is evidence of service and the specimen collection manual distribution. Tell me that the manual are distributed to all people inside lab and concerned people in another department. So telling them how to prepare the specimen outside uh, uh, lab and what to do with the specimen since it came to your lab. Number 38, laboratory hospital policy and procedure on specimen labeling, how to label your specimen container. 
نمبر 39 لابوراتوري هوستل بوليسي اون بروسيدور ان سامبلينج باكينج هاندلينج ترانسبورتينج اند تراكينج از وي سيت سينس بيبول تيك ذي سبيسيمين انسايد ذا ديبارتمنت انتيل ات ويل كم تو يور ديبارتمنت ان لاب وات would you uh, manipulate how could you manipulate the sample like packing putting it in a container handling transporting from one depart to the department from one area to another area and how could you take those uh, specimen number 40 is laboratory policy for minimum test services requesting information what are the minimum information you want on your specimen or a sample you have to tell me what i have to uh, document on the Uh, uh, take it on the uh, uh, samples like the name of the patient how many names third names four names would you would you like to put the medical record number the name of the physician or the nurse taking the sample who's the concerning the physician or mrb uh, what time date whatever you need tell me on a, inside on a policy and show me it's implemented for the information requested on a test or a service Number 41, laboratory policy and procedure on a specimen recipient and an inspection, how to receive them and to inspect the uh, uh, test is coming to you from uh, outside the lab, how to make sure it's uh, enough sample, good sample, it's well preserved, all information are uh, uh, enough. Number 42, laboratory specimen retention policy for how long you will retain those specimen inside Uh, your lab tell me through a policy number 43 laboratory policy on donor identification and i believe that from 43 down it's concerning lab and we said we will specialize uh, uh, a separate presentation for uh, lab we will go to number 91 all of this are related to uh, blood bank so 91 again we'll go to the general lab written description of the blood laboratory report tell me how to describe your report what are the items inside report show me one report your report should be standardized all over the hostel from one department to department from home to home what are the results what are the reference number who will sign and so on so tell me what is your standardized report inside the hostel then 92 we're talking about laboratory hostel policy and procedure on critical uh, test results Uh, the critical test result or panic values to me the policy the form the logbook what you are doing and of course when the surveyor will go to the department will check it after checking it on your policy and the logbook uh, whatever it's electronic or paperwork 93 laboratory policy process and procedure on amending correcting a reported result if we have to uh, withdraw a result or we want to correct we send or we prepared a result and it was wrong or mistake or uh, 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 giving to wrong uh, uh, patient how you amend it how you withdraw it and correct the result and send it to back to the requested department then laboratory policy and uh, on compelling surgical pathology report this is related to uh, histopathology we'll discuss it in the, another presentation with blood bank 95 is laboratory policy and procedure on reference range of uh, and the cut of values the reference range of for uh, uh, the results and what what are the cut uh, of values you have to put it uh, inside your policy and train people on it then we'll go to the laboratory document and records number 96 master list and table of content of laboratory policy and procedure like a manual containing what are the policies with number with uh, uh, references of those policies you have to uh, prepare a manual for the policies 97 laboratory policy and procedure on the control of deviation and exception this is a very important policy if you are allowing uh, uh, some physician or some department to do some deviation and exception for example for the time for example for the amount of sample for example for the information something related to emergency life saving tell me what are those deviation and exception and what to do and you train people on it number 98 is laboratory policy and document and records management tell me about the uh, documents and record records you are using and how you will uh, preserve them where for how long when to uh, recall for them This is very important one, and the way when you have to uh, 
send those one to archive or you will uh, send them to waste and destroy or destruct those uh, records and uh, documents if you don't need them anymore and you have to mention in your policy that uh, it's according to the uh, country policies related to those documents uh, for example you have to save them forever for med medical legal and so on then we will go to laboratory information management information system downtime procedure and the form tell me through a policy through a, a work through a document through a logbook through a memo what you're going to do is if there is downtime uh, process this means if you are using a system inside uh, uh, lab whatever it is HIS or uh, paperwork what you will do if there is a shutdown downtime the system is down or even the paperwork is down destroy it you don't you cannot find it what you will do tell me inside the policy or inside the uh, uh, plan what you are going to do and if you have any forms you have to show it to the surveyor we will go to another uh, uh, area which is laboratory assessment Laboratory assessment 105, starting from 105. 105 here talking about laboratory quality management and the program. Tell me what you are planning to do related to quality here. What are the quality improvement the methodology you are using, the records, the data, data collection, analysis, presentation, reports, anything related to quality inside lab. Number 106, laboratory hospital policy and procedure on selection, as we said before, how to select the data and the indicators of KPI, how to collect the data, how to report them, tabular or graphic, and the monitoring of them, and what's the quality indicators you have. As we said before, the critical test result, the TAT, the uh, number of lost uh, specimen, rejected specimen, and so on. Uh, 108, laboratory policy and process, uh, process procedure on Proficiency testing. Again, you have to show me the policy of profe proficiency uh, testing. Again, we have laboratory uh, continual improvement process. Number 109, laboratory quality management plan and the program discussed before. 110, performance improvement projects. As we know that Sibahi were requiring uh, uh, around four improvement projects inside lab, two general and the two for blood bank. So you have to uh, prepare two projects of improvement inside lab and the report of the project itself what's happening if you are asking about some initiative you can do uh, uh, improvement project is that if that is not uh, good you have to uh, improve uh, again critical test or panic uh, values you can do for it you can do improvement project for the safety for the infection for infection control for delivering the samples for the re uh, results for the timing anything you can do if uh, the numbers are not good or the situation is not uh, satisfying you can do improvement the project number one 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 periodic departmental performance improvement report as we said that activities improvement activities here and the project you have to make uh, uh, periodic reports like uh, annually or by annually or monthly or uh, uh, quarterly report for the initiatives, the improvement activities, the improvement project, what's going on, are we are going well, are we are improving or not. Then we will go to uh, uh, POCT again, training uh, record and assessment record for palliative care as we discussed before. For the general lab, again, laboratory staff schedule, times uh, for schedule for the people, uh, physicians, uh, consultants, uh, technicians, and so on. Number three is record of approving exception to policies, as we discussed before, if there is any exceptions. Number four, laboratory safety and infection control audit report. This is not the same infection control manual. The manual is okay, we are discussing, but now you are doing monitoring, audit, people are implementing or not through specific uh, items or forms and tell me how what you are doing with those forms and the results sample of hazards material inventory list just to give me the inv inventory list of some hazards material inside lab number six computer or paper uh, record for complete audit trail as we discussed before number seven computer paperwork or paperwork for complete audit trail when and where the task is performed 
Number eight, laboratory personal training competency assessment record and methods. Number nine, safe operation of medical equipment training record. All are those are records you have to show for the survey. Number 10, records uh, for recipient inspection testing in, uh, for the critical test are critical material and services incoming from outside lab. Number 11 is computer or paper record for tracing uh, materials. All of those are, we are discussed before as a policy, but now we are needing a record for tracking or monitoring. Number 12, reagent and the material storage temperature monitoring record. Of course, we have to uh, uh, estimate the temperature at least three times per day for anything inside the, a storage or inside a refrigerator or even in the normal uh, 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 temperature of the room. Number 13, water testing record. Did you test your water and what are the records? Number 14, laboratory equipment, recipient installation and the end identification records. Number 16, evidence of qualification of medical suppliers. Number 17, laboratory equipment validation record. 18, laboratory method validation uh, record. Number 19, records for establishing uh, validating reference ranges and the cut of values as we discussed in the policy before laboratory instrument and the standardization record number 21 laboratory methods or instrument correlation record all of those are records for something we discussed before in the policies let's go to another section starting from number 28 in this page down laboratory specimen uh, recipient reject record show me the recipient rec recip recipient uh, record and the reject record. If you rejected any samples, show me the record of the sample of the uh, rejected samples and tell me what inside those records. What are the uh, samples rejected? Why? The date? By whom? And so on. Delivered to the people or not? Requested another sample or not? And so on. Twenty-nine record for accepting suboptimal specimen. As we said before, this is for uh, exceptions and. By this, we finished all things related to the general lab, and inshallah, in another presentation, because of the time, we will discuss the uh, blood bank and the histopathologies. Thank you very much. Until we meet again, assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.